Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back. You can see I have not changed clothes. I am going ahead and jumping right into this recording uh, for the next episode today. And this is our end of season review. Yes, uh, two days ago, of course, remember this goes up uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so three days a week. I also have my single team save with the Groff Shop. Uh, in the Netherlands, that goes up Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three days a week. So still six episodes of Football Manager on the channel. Uh, so make sure you're checking out that uh, series as well if you're interested. And uh, I am really enjoying this one. I like The Journeyman. It's just, uh, I think it's my favorite one. But uh, we had a great season, best season finish in club history. I have not advanced any, so you know I'm picking up right where we left off last episode with the end of season review. So for 2050, 2051, remember this is a plus 30. I do a plus 30 save uh, for all my saves. And here we go. So let's sort this by average rating. There we go. Uh, so here are our newcomers. So we had Carlos Vera. Uh, he comes in, cost us 2.3 million. 35 starts, 18 goals, 6 assists. I think that was a pretty good return. Pavel Heidenreich, 24-year-old goalkeeper, $945,000, 35 appearances, and played a 6.97. Uh, let's see. Oh, I, oh, yeah, I forgot they do this. So we got an A grade with Vera, right? And then Heidenreich, we got a B plus. And this was mainly due to getting the player to agree to a lower salary than we would have expected to pay. Uh, Yarmolenko, Alexander Yarmolenko, right back, 25 years old, comes from Shakhtar. $5.1 million, C grade. They're content, but too high of a salary for his place in the squad. Not an everyday starter, 12 starts. That could be my fault. We'll have to look at it. Michael Robinson, 1.87. We get an A-plus grade. And uh, they like the minimum release clause. And he gets eight goals, three uh, I'm sorry, three goals, one assist, and eight starts. He has not been here all season. He was a late season acquisition. Radu Stoika, uh, left back, C-grade, cost 738000 And he had one assist in 32 starts. Konstantin Carabello, we get a C plus on him. He costs 3.62 million, 11 starts, 10 off the bench, so 21 appearances, three goals, two assists, didn't play badly. And Arpad Zil Zilagi, maybe, a 19 year old winger, a C grade, 658,000. He made one appearance for us, but. Uh, they don't like his salary, and I think we, when we signed him, we knew he was going to be for a uh, future future acquisition. As far as the transfers out, Lucas Susak, uh, we got a B minus grade on selling him, ten point three seven million. Vitaly Zubkov, twenty nine year old striker, we got an E. They didn't want to sell him; they wanted a higher transfer. We got twelve and a half million. Uh, Timothy Krivostiuk, $37 million. We got a C grade, but I don't think they were happy that we sold him, but it was due to getting such a healthy profit. Uh, Rodic, we got $1.5 million, a B-minus grade from the board. Uh, Sukovic, Jakobic, something like that, a C-minus grade, $1.5 million. Uh, they wanted a higher transfer fee. Of course they did. James Malone, $23 million, a C grade. James was the guy I did not want to sell, but it was such a good offer, I, I couldn't pass on it. And Stanislav Ponomarev, 2.56. And again, D grade, they wanted a higher fee, is what it is. So there's the moves. Uh, we won the Ukrainian Super Cup, so that's good. They didn't. They wanted us to not be outclassed. We got a B minus grade there in the Ukrainian Cup, a C plus. Euro Cup two, a B plus. We reached the quarterfinals, so we'll be back in that next year. And we made some pretty good money in there. 
In the Euro Cup, we got eliminated immediately by Galatasaray, and I didn't even mean to say their name. I just threw up a little bit in my mouth. Uh, and then a uh, A minus grade for finishing third in the Premier League, so that's good. Moments to remember: four nil win over Morapal. A three two loss over Ingolets was a, a match to rem a three two win match to remember. And goal of the season was Kuczynski's strike, uh, twenty three yard screamer in a four two win over Borskla. On the finances, we are still national level reputations. No new sponsorships or anything. Vera, Bidney, Komziak, Tarashenko, and Simic are top selling jerseys. Vera's not a surprise. Uh, you, only 6,000 jerseys sold. Come on, people, buy some, Bol some Bolin shirts. I'd like to get a Bolin shirt, maybe. Maybe. I know that's something a lot of YouTubers do, but you got to remember, I'm in the States, and it's hard for me to get anything out of Europe, man. Um, even my hat. I've bought things from the Leeds website twice. My credit card is always denied, uh, and then I have to for fraud, and then I have to call my bank, get it over, you know, tell them, yes, I'm really trying to buy something from Europe, and then they approve it, and then I have to go buy it again. And then it goes through, but then if I want to buy something else, like just a few minutes later, it gets denied again. It's got to be uh, just an international thing. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. Did we do anything? Does it look like it? All right. We had uh, Fans Player of the Season, Victor Bidney, our 23-year-old center back. Young Player of the Season, the same. Carlos Vera signing of the season, and Oleg Kuczynski was the goal of the season. New record set at the club this year, 18 goals is most goals in a season. Most goals in a match was the hat trick by Vera. Simic had a most uh, hat trick in a league match. And Timothy Krivostiak, uh 32.79 is the new record transfer fee received. And I just hit on his name, and boy, that was not good. Because you know what happens there. It goes right back. So let me edit out this part as we move through. We already talked last episode about uh, who we were losing. We're only losing one player. So just kind of looking through here. Record record high finish for us. Ooh, seven points. Seven points. Wow. All right. Well, I'm going to do all this other stuff off uh, off camera. Well, let's see. We do need to, we can look at, um, yeah, we can look at this. So best 11. So Victor Bidney and Sergey, Sergey Komziak. So Komziak is in the mid and Bidney is on the back line center back. Uh, Bidney makes uh, the, into the starting 11, as does Komziak. So not bad at all. Oh, and there's another way to see the season review, but very good season. I'm happy with that. Performance review, 63 goals on a 62.4 XG. That's pretty spot on. 59.3 X points. I guess that's your expected points with the goals. Uh, we scored 59, so right on it. And they expected us to finish second with that, and we finished third, so just under. All right, well... 2.0 XG per match. And you can see again how we rate out. Quiet and leaky on the defense. Aggressive and clinical on the attack. Taking a look at club vision in progress. Mid-table for next year. Group stage. and my con So I did sign the two-year contract to start. So, but we they they had already offered me. Remember, we talked about that. They had offered me an extension, and I told them no. So, um, mid table. So we'll accept that. There's our dynamics. Everything looks good. And let's have our meeting with the players. I don't think any of our guys won awards. Doesn't look like it. So let me dive into transfers, and I will see you guys back here with some news. All right, we are back. So we're just going to finish up transfers, get up to the opening match of the season.
take a look at how things are progressing and some news for you guys, which will give you maybe a little more of an idea of how this journeyman may progress. Because at this point, even I don't know where we're going to go. So if you have any input, let's talk about it. Let's go in real quick and let's take a look at our leagues first off. So these are the leagues and the ones that are marked playable, and you can pause this to look at it. So you can see some of the big leagues, France, Germany, are, are view only, right? England. And there's the rest of the leagues that we have in here. So we can turn some of these leagues on if we want to. I kind of wanted to stay away from some of the more in-depth leagues, but maybe we want to turn those on and have those as options to go to. You let me know. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Because here's the thing, I will not get job offers from any of these countries that are view only. So you can see I was trying to put some of the more Asian countries, the, the uh, you know, the Ukrainian, Switzerland, uh, you know, the Czech Republic, some of the more off the beaten path that, you know, a lot of people don't venture to. Well, here's the thing. It limits the number of clubs that we can possibly play at. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute, and that may make a little more sense why that could be a big deal. So keep that in mind. Let's get into some other stuff. All right, schedule-wise, here's our friendlies, a 1-1 draw against Ghent, a 5-0 dismantling of Cherkashena, a 2-2 draw with PSV, a 2-0 defeat to Atletico Madrid, and that is our senior affiliate, and a 2-0 win over Heron Heronveen, and of course we know them from our Dutch save, as well as PSV in our single team save with the Grop shop check it out if you haven't carlos vera with the hat trick there timothy stretched off with a brace in the psv game and vera scored four in the first half against uh Chirkashena. so pretty good start to the season all things considered if we take a look at competitions ukrainian cup uh, reached the quarterfinals Euro Cup 2 reached the group stage, and we're going to be entering the third qualifying round. I'm not sure why we're entering the third qualifying round, because we finished third last year, and we should go in at the Euro Cup playoffs. But we're going in as a fourth place team rather than a third place team, so not sure what the cause for that is, but it is what it is. Uh, let's see... We looked at the club history. All right, so let's take a look at the transfers. So going out, uh, we let uh, Victor Garvaluk on a free. 19 years old, but he was really never going to play for us. Funny thing is, I'm seeing anytime we let a young player go, like under the age of 22, the board gets and the fans get kind of freaked out. So, you know, even if they're 12th on the depth chart, they're like, oh, my God, you let somebody good go. <laughs> Rar, uh, Rarick Moore, 900,000 to Michaelave. Uh, he's not bad, 26 years old. He can play two backline positions, but he's not great. We picked him up last year for 675000 So we make a little bit of profit on him here. And he only played in three matches, and two of those were off the bench. So he was expendable. Uh, in fact, the club, the, the players were talking to me during the preseason meeting, and they were like, you know, you did promise last year that you're going to cull the squad a little bit. And I haven't really done that. These are mostly younger guys. Uh, we've got a loan out, so no big deal. Uh, Victor Kravchenko, our aging veteran goalkeeper that we wanted to trade sell on last year. Uh, when we remember, we had like an eleven million dollar offer, and the board wanted like seventy seven million. Well, here we are a year later, and I take three point two, possibly going up to four million, and. Uh, 
board didn't care. So the board cost them, and that might be enough reason for me to leave by them meddling and screwing with my plans. But, you know, at the end of the day, once we'll let that slide, maybe, starts becoming a habit, might have to walk away from that. Another loan here with Schvetz and Stretovich, something like that. And Mike Vandenberg, he goes off on loan too. Trying to get these younger players some playing time, regular consistent playing time to where they can start. So really only one move, the aging veteran keeper. We only bring in one player. And we're going to talk about this a little bit. Alexander uh, Smirnov, uh, he's a vodka from Shakhtar. $3 million going up to 3.7. Right back, very good physicals. Five-star potential, two-and-a-half-star current ability, only 19 years old. He is Ukrainian. And marking, passing, tackling, I like what he can do. I think he could slot in as a defensive mid, but he can also be on that right side. Decent crossing for this league, uh, right up there with you know the best that we've got on the team. But taking a look at the Bielsa, Bielsa ratings, uh, he has some speed. Above average stamina, above average work rate, teamwork, you know, so all the things that Bielsa really values, he's got. So we did talk about trying to mold, you know, this is a Bielsa styled journeyman. And honestly, it's going to be, it's different already from anything that I've done. So if we look at Bielsa's history, and, and I can really only speak from Leeds United the last few years because that's the team that I support. When Bielsa came in, the prevailing theory was is that we had a club full of players that were at best mid-table championship. And even some of our players, our captain, for example, was referred to as League One Liam because they thought he was only a League One quality center back. And Bielsa came in and coached the players. Where most managers come in and go, I need transfers and I need to buy players. Bielsa came in, in when he, before he was hired, when they sat down, he had a dossier on every player what he felt he could do to make that player better, what he could do, not what the player could do, what he could do, and what changes he wanted made. And there was only a few. Literally, there was only a handful of changes that first year. Same thing the second year. He basically kept the entire team, and we signed Helder Costa. We already had Jack Harrison on loan. Got rid of uh, Pontus Janssen, brought in Ben White, who was a nobody. Nobody knew who he was, uh, you know, and turned him into a, a you know all championship level player. And now got promoted to the Premier League. And in the first year, it's weird they did spend a hundred million dollars or a hundred million pounds in the first year. But if you look at what they got, they got six or seven kids that went into the U21s and the U18s for the future and are already paying big dividends. You got the starting number nine for, the, for Spain. You got a starting center back from Germany's national team. You got a center back that's in, in the rotation for the Spanish international team. And we got a Brazilian, I'd call him a Brazilian wonder kid because I think he's awesome, but we got a, a Brazilian uh, winger. So those are the four players we got, three internationals and one that is probably going to be an international at some point now that he's playing in the Premier League. So that's pretty good value for the money. And, you know, we paid anywhere from 17 to $29 million for all four players, which was great value. So he looks for value, players that will fit into his system, his philosophy, and buy into his techniques. 
and his game planning and his practice methods. And he's very loyal to the players. He literally got rid of nobody from last year. And even a player that was at the end of his contract, right, got injured with a season-long injury or basically, a, you know, he tore his ACL in the final match of the season. His contract expired after the game. They kept him on board so he could have access to the, to the medical staff, rehab and training facilities, and they then turned around and signed him to a one-year contract extension so he can say he was in the Premier League with Leeds United. That's the kind of club this this is, the kind of management and ownership and you know that that we have in the board and the kind of man we have running the team in Bielsa. Loyalty maybe to a fault. So that's one thing I did this year. I mean, if we jump into scouting and we look at our scouted players, I mean, I've got a long list here. I've got a really long list. I don't know how many players that is. 389 currently. And we just extended out to Eastern Europe in our recruitment. But I didn't really see any holes. I already, I mean, we started Hyden right because we brought him in last year, right? So the other guy was 34, making a lot of money, didn't want him on the bench. And I had Pal and Carole. And I thought both of those guys were decent enough deputies. So goalie is sorted. Heidenreich did a good job last year. Don't need to replace him. Binyi, Radnov in the middle, Isev off the bench, Stoika, Yarmolenko. Uh, we are bringing Fedor back from loan, and he's going to stay with the club this year. Uh, Tarasenko, Makarenko, Ryboski. I mean, you know, the, the really the only – we needed this position over here. I, th I thought maybe we could upgrade here, and we we did. Was it there? Well, the guy that we just looked at, right? Smirnov. He's a right back, and he's a, a defensive mid. So you can see he's actually pretty far down the list as far as, oh, I've excluded some players because they're starting other positions, right? So there's Smirnov. But you see, he's got a five-star potential. If we sort by potential, now he's a starter quality. And he's right behind Tarasenko. So Bielsa loves to play his young kids. He's very loyal to, to the players that get him, that, that produce. So that's kind of what we're going to go with philosophy-wise. So you guys kind of understand the thought process and I'm kind of developing this as we're kind of going so but that's why I want you to be aware of what I'm leaning towards so something like that uh, then we look at like say our number 10 position normally you would look at that and go wow my best players two and a half star right well if we dig into that and we sort by potential well now we've got two guys that are four star and a three star and Camps is only two and a half star, but he's five star in the role as an attacking mid. And we know that he has overperformed when we've given him opportunity. And last year, for example, we wanted to give him more opportunity. He played a 699. We just never could get in the habit of playing him. So I said, you know what? That's the kind of player that this build, this save is built around that. I want Camps to play, right? I want him to play. So by God, we're going to let him play. And we're going to put him in, and we're going to see what happens. We've also, we're also going to cut, I tried to sell Yuri Simic, and that was going to make Camps our number three striker as well. So, you know, I'm looking at things like that. Who are the players that I really like? Who are the players that have performed when given an opportunity? And we want to continue to give those players a chance until they just prove that they can't. So typically, if you look at my other save or previous years, we get to a point in, in the window and I've got money and I'm like, spin, spin, spin. Oh, this guy's an upgrade because he's got five-star potential and three-and-a-half-star and I'll sign him. 
Now I'm not going to do that. I really want these guys to develop. If we look at the club, we really have great facilities. If we take a look at the vision, they are there improving the training facilities this offseason. I think it costs two and a half million dollars, and that will be completed here in a couple of months. And that's going to bump us back up to a five star training facility. So we're set. We've got the infrastructure in place to develop these players. So what does that mean? Well, you just saw we haven't spent any money. We started with 14, well, 17 million, and I'm up to 19 with the sales, and we're almost a million dollars under the pay under the payroll cap. So I've got room to make moves. If something jumps up and, and just gets my attention, nothing in my scouting has. And again, like a lot of people that do these YouTube channels or the journeyman stuff, I usually let my scouts bring players to me rather than me searching for players because that gives the, that gives the, you know, it brings the, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. The just brings more chance or luck into, into the save. Now, here's the big thing, and this is what we're going to close on. Typically in a journeyman, oh, I have signed some, some more scouts and stuff, so we have really ramped up to where we're near the top of the league or top of the league, which should help us out immensely. We've gone from three to six scouts. But most journeymen, what is the basic premise? Moving up to bigger leagues, bigger clubs. This is not going to be that type of journeyman. Remember, we're styling this after Marcelo Bielsa. So Bielsa never takes a job unless the job itself is interesting for some reason. And it's never about winning silverware. Never. It's about the ability to implement his system and the ability to make an impact of positive sorts. Looking at Leeds, bringing them back to the Premier League after 16 seasons. He has settled, I mean, he lives above a, a freaking coffee shop and walks to the stadium every day. And his big thing coming in was, I want improvements to the training ground and the facilities for the players. I want places where they can take naps and sleep. In, you know, So they basically have a built-in hotel in their training facility with rooms for every player so they don't have to go home, drive an hour home, and then an hour back for an afternoon tr uh, workout session or go to a hotel and pay for it out of pocket. Those are things that Bielsa does. And he doesn't go after, you know, there was, you know, there's been all kind of talk this year, you know, oh, Man United is struggling, you know, they need to get Bielsa. Bielsa's never going to go to Man United, and it has nothing to do with the rivalry between them and Leeds. I think it has more to do with the fan base, the attitude of the club, and the fact that they, you know, they're a type of club that looks to spend money to solve their problems. And uh, that's not what Bielsa is about. And so if you look at Bielsa's history, he takes some really odd jobs that maybe aren't in line with his reputation or his ability, but it's always tiered towards something that gets his attention. So the reason that comes up is Copenhagen came available. Now, we looked earlier, and I told you to remember this, we looked at the leagues that I had loaded. This is going to be one of the top clubs in our universe <laughs> that is going to be available ever, right? And I turned, I, I, you know, the media came to me and said, what do you think? And I said, not interested. I mean, I literally, I went to, I went to Wikipedia, I went online, I went into the game, and this is what turned me off. Right here. They're in the top league, right? But they have dominated. I mean, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten titles in a row, and 14 out of 17. I don't think that would interest Bielsa in the least. This is a club already at the top level 
of their league. They're already established in Champions League. He's, you know, I don't think he would be, you know, he would not be interested in that. There's nothing compelling for him to achieve. So I, I said, I looked at that and in a normal journeyman, oh, I would have been here in a heartbeat. And I literally had to save the game and sit and think about it. I sat there for about 30 minutes just looking online, looking at the city, going back into Bielsa's history online, and came to the conclusion that Bielsa would not take this job. And I could be wrong, but, you know, this is my interpretation of that. And I don't think he would have taken this job. And I don't think he would go to a club. You know, I don't think he would go to a Man City or, you know, a Liverpool still might interest him, a big, big club, but that's, you know, only reached it recently and, you know, in, in a quite a while. That might, you know, that might compel him a little bit, but I don't think a Man City or a Man United would. Uh, you, you know, when he went to, he went to Atletico Madrid, not Real Madrid. You know, he went to the second tier club in the city that, you know, was trying to get a leg up or catch up to somebody. So those are the things I don't, you know, I don't think 32, uh, you know, Superliga Cups uh, is going to be something that interests him in the least. So while it was hard personally from a journeyman perspective, uh, it was pretty easy once I, you know, once I tried to get my, my head in that space. And that's honestly been the hardest thing about this save. So um, interested to see what you guys think about that. So very limited transfers this year. Uh, we've only got the one player coming in. We do have a couple of other players that are under contract that we're looking to move on, on loan. Um, you know, we tried to sell a couple of other guys or had offers. Uh, Delesha, while I like him, you know, we're, we're looking to, I'm looking to, Call that roster because that's what the players are expecting. And if you're third, fourth, fifth choice, well, if you're fourth, fifth, sixth choice, you're going to be expendable that I can move you out. And worst case scenario is I bring somebody in from the B team or the under 21s for, you know, one or two matches here or there due to injury. Bielsa historically goes with really small squads, which I need to get a little bit better on because, yeah, I mean, we've only got one page, so it's not like I've got a massive squad. But uh, anyway, that's what we're looking at for this season. Traditionally, all as always, these transfer videos go a little long, but I wanted to really kind of dive into this with you guys. And so, you know, you could try to get on the same wavelength as I am trying to be on. And, you know, I'm going to need you to keep me on the uh, on the straight and narrow here. But I'm also looking for some feedback and guidance from you. Did I make the right decision here? Do you th do you agree with that decision? I mean, it's too late. We've moved on. The, the job's still available. But, you know, that's not a job I'm going to go after. Um, the other thing I need to kind of wonder about, Leeds has a pretty young squad. But we do have a lot of our starting 11 are now getting into that range that I would normally sell players, 28, 29, 30, 31. I usually don't have anybody 30, 30 years or older on my clubs, but we got rid of the 34-year-old thir keeper, but that was only because he had already been replaced by a younger goalkeeper who's 24. But you look here, we've got uh, Jan Fidrich, and he's 31, probably going to be my starting right winger this year. Uh, Philip Camps, we talked about him. He's 29. So, uh, you know, got to start thinking about that too. You know, we may not see a lot of turnover, but the biggest thing is at what point if I'm not getting here, – here's the interesting thing. Football manager for a journeyman style – I think is traditionally geared to get you job offers from higher up. And I don't mind going up in levels. Now, our league is number 10 in the world. So, you know, we know there are certain places I'm not going to go, number nine. Um, and I think all the other ones are, a lot of these aren't playable. So most, you know, the top five, for example, aren't playable. 
even the lower clubs. And you know what? Maybe I just answered my question. Maybe we need to make those playable, not to be looking at, you know, let's look at uh, let's look at Spain for example, not to be looking at Madrid, Bilbao, Barcelona, but maybe the Getafe's. Wow, Real. Oh well, this is yeah, this is this doesn't tell me last year because they're not playable. So, but you know, maybe maybe some of these clubs would be of interest even being in a higher level league, but being a more mid and lower range of the table in those leagues. So maybe I, maybe I answered my own question. But help me out. Let me know in the comments. Do we turn those leagues on and make them playable? I'm leaning yes. I'm leaning yes just based on what we just talked about. So thanks for listening to me on that. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Well, guys, that's a lot of information. Players, one transfer in, a couple of transfers out. Possible job offer that we rejected. But more about philosophy at this point because this is our first off season, and this is the first time we've had to put this philosophy for the save to the test. And so I want to make sure that you know this is going to set the foundation for the rest of the, of the year, basically, uh, as we progress through this save. So we'll talk to you guys next episode. We will get into it. Uh, going into the schedule, uh, we do open up uh, with Shakhtar, Vorskla, and uh, then we have uh, Euro Cup path action. Oh, by the way, well, I don't even know. Couldn't even tell you. There's no way to even really dial that down to see who we're going to play or whatever. So anyway, we'll figure that out as we go. I, uh, I don't even know if we should mess with that. But uh, maybe that's, you know. I think we'll come back, we'll see highlights for Shakhtar, and we'll open up with Borskla, and then we'll see where we go from there. Have a good one, guys. Take care. Bye.